Right, time for us to bring our cricket expert Ashish Ray into the show. Good evening, sir. Uh, with Kohli at the crease, the match is tantalizingly uh, poised. Would you give India any chance to win this test match? Well, on paper, you could say that uh, the advantage is with England. But as long as Virat Kohli is out there in the middle, I think I would back India. It's as simple as that. The match revolves around Virat Kohli. He's the key to the match and he can win it for India if he stays till the end of the game. With the target uh, being under 100, a uh, little under 100, would you say that makes it a little less pressure for, for India and, and a lot more pressure on the English side? Technically, psychologically, it is less pressure. It's less than 100 runs to get and India have crossed the three-figure mark, so you could say that India are more comfortable. But at the end of the day, it's the wicket and the atmosphere that will decide the match. What has happened in this fourth Indian innings is that the wicket was actually quite harmless, but the ball was swinging prodigiously in the air in this uh, third afternoon. And so that caused problems. There were overcast conditions which added to India's problems, right. so much so that because of poor light, uh, the floodlights had to be switched on. And mm -hmm. so the game progressed and continued under floodlights right. in what was an afternoon in England. Right. Uh, but tell me, what's separating Virat Kohli from the rest of the Indian batsmen? Is, is it just that he's sticking to the basics that the others are not following? You would expect uh, Murali Vijay and Ajinkya Rahane to do well in English conditions because they've proved themselves in England in the past and they've looked reasonably comfortable. But what I find is that they are possibly lacking in confidence because they did not get runs in South Africa. So off late in test matches, they have not been scoring heavily. Mm -hmm. And in particular, I think the rotation policy of the Indian selectors right. may have affected uh, these two batsmen, Murali and uh, Rahane, because they are both fine players. All they need is to be more positive. And once they are more positive, they will get on top of the bowling rather than allow the bowlers to get on top of them. Mm -hmm. Saurav Ganguly, in fact, has been talking about giving players longer runs uh, at specific spots. Would you say that's something that the Indians are lacking, particularly the number three spots? Uh, would you say having Rahul or Pujara for a longer spell will help India? Too much of reshuffling of the batting order is never wise. And, and therefore, I would go along with uh, Saurav Ganguly if he said that. And I would actually have played six batsmen in this Indian team, a specialist batsman like uh, Cheteshwar Pujara. And he is a fairly established number three batsman. Mm -hmm. Although I think technically he's as good to open as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And if his run rate is an issue, then, then why not make him open? Right. Rahul, I think, has been shuffled up and down, and he's finding it difficult to adjust. He's, again, a very promising young player, and I see no reason why he should not succeed in future. Hmm. Uh, would you say that uh, it is time now for Chiteshwar Pujara to be back in the team, uh, get Rahul, uh, KL Rahul to open and, Dhawan to, uh, sorry, and uh, Chiteshwar Pujara to come in at number three? I don't Dhawan. wish to make... I don't wish to make drastic uh, suggestions at this point of time. It's still too early. One should not panic. And that's also very important. Let's see how this match finishes. And thereafter, the selectors can take a call. But as I said, to start with, in the opening test of a series, which generally sets a trend, I would have played safe and played six specialist batsman instead of uh, the all-rounder that right. we have at the moment, who's a promising player, mm -hmm. let's uh, face it, Hardik Pandya, but he's still what I would call a developing all-rounder at the test level. He's not a full-grown, full-blown all-rounder at the highest level of the game. Mr. Ray, what would you say has made the pitch difficult to bat on? Is it, is it, is it the pitch or the conditions, the changing conditions, as you mentioned, the uh, varying uh, uh, light that you, we have seen during the day today? The pitch, I think, is uh, 
quite all right. Uh, it isn't a pacey wicket. It's uh, on the quicker side a little bit, but this is what you expect in England. It is, in fact, by English standards, not a fast wicket. A fast wicket would generally be encountered in a place like Trent Bridge. But uh, what has ha happened is that cloud conditions have created favorable conditions for bowlers, and therefore the ball has been moving a lot in the air. And uh, all the English bowlers are able to swing the ball with control, and that is certainly a problem that India has faced. What I would add to that is that uh, as the match has progressed, on one side of the pitch, which is the far side from the pavilion, some patches have developed, and these patches have generated a bit of disconcerting movement. Not a lot, but the odd ball, both outside a right-handers off stump and a left-handers off stump, has been shooting along a little faster or maybe deviating in a slightly unexpected manner. But then you expect that at the end of a third day of a test match. And tomorrow, of course, uh, those patches will remain. Right. The interesting thing is, and that gives you a clue, that uh, Adil Rashid, who is the only leg spinner in the England team, indeed the only slow bowler in the England team, he has been given only one over mm -hmm. in this fourth inning so far. Now, that tells you how favorable the conditions have been for faster bowlers. Right. Uh, I came across an interesting statistics. It says that in the last two years of test cricket, India's last four batsmen have contributed an average of 61 Point five runs per innings. Uh, does that make you hopeful for India to win the test match tomorrow? Well, I would certainly hope that India don't have to go into the tail to win this test match. I'll give you one piece of news, which is this, that uh, in 2007, Dinesh Karthik came to England and opened the batting for India, and he did a very good job. So he's uh, an accomplished batsman, and he looked good at the crease, he's not suffering from a lack of confidence. And if he stays, and with uh, Kohli batting beautifully, I don't see why not uh, India can win this match. Let me just add something which might interest you even more. We've been talking a lot about the glorious innings that uh, Virat Kohli played on the second day uh, with that absolutely marvelous 149 that he got uh, and uh, kept India in the game in the first innings. But let me tell you this, he's played even better in the second innings. Technically, he's been absolutely faultless. He gave a few chances in the first innings. In this second innings, he's been middling just about everything. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, sir, um, well, it is not. it was not just the... Uh... Indian batsmen, but the English uh, batsmen too struggled on this pitch. And Ishant Sharma came up with a 5-4. He bowled beautifully today. Would you say that this by far is one of the best spells of fast bowling that you've seen from Ishant Sharma? I've been watching Ishant Sharma from the time that he played his very first test match uh, more than 10 years ago at Perth when he looked very promising indeed. I don't think he's realized that promise fully in terms of pace and bounce, but he still remains a very penetrative bowler. He bowled India to victory here in England at Lord's uh, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, today he was again accurate. He's essentially a bowler who makes the ball come into a right-hander and leave the right, left-hander. And right. let me make a point here, which is this, that England have seven left-handed batsmen, and that has been to their disadvantage in this match. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because in having seven left-handed batsmen, they've A, played into the hands of the off-spinner Ravi Ashwin, and both Ishan Sharma and Shami make the ball leave the left-handed batsman. And so there again, India have had a trump card by right. bowling to left-handers. Right. Uh, I think we have run out of time on the discussion. But before we let you go, I'll have to ask you this question. That Alex Stewart said Sam Curran would end up as a better batsman uh, than a bowler. Did we see shades of that uh, today? Sam Curran has certainly proved to be a very plucky all-rounder. In the first innings, uh, he troubled the Indian batsman with his left arm swing bowling. He's essentially a bowler who 
swings the ball into the right-hander and away from the left-hander. Now, that's not an easy task because most left-arm quick bowlers, they slant the ball away from a right-hander. To bring right. it in is that extra element in his bowling. And mm -hmm. certainly, his batting today proved that he's not just a gutsy player, but he also has strokes. He hit a couple of sixes, which showed that he times the ball very well, and he has excellent temperament. So right. I wouldn't be surprised if he establishes himself. And I know why Alex Stewart has said it, because Alex Stewart comes from Surrey, as does Sam Curran, and he's backing his Surrey man. But in this case, I think Alec could be right. Right. We were delighted by those sixes to off Ravi Ashwin, in fact, uh, when he was bowling to Sam Curran. We've completely run, off run out of time this evening. Thanks for joining us on the show, and we'll get back to you as the game progresses.